So in this final section, I'd like to talk about two dogs and two cats, um, clinical cases, and let's see how we did in terms of understanding the general principles of diagnosis of hypo and hyperthyroidism. Our first patient is a dog, a five-year-old miniature poodle who's on phenobarbital therapy for epilepsy. The only <clears throat> biochemical abnormality that we can find is that there's a persistent hyperlipemia. And um, moving right to the endocrine testing, free T4 uh, showed a value that was low. Let me just write in that for you. Low. And TSH was high. So my question is, would you treat this dog? This is obviously the reason you're trying to, does this dog have hypothyroidism or not? And the answer possibilities are no, these do not support, either they don't support, or we're not sure, or absolutely yes. And I'm going to go ahead in this recording and go ahead and tell you the answer. Um, the answer is absolutely yes. And that is, and the reason is, so the answer is C. The reason is this combination that I, that I mentioned before of a low measurement of T4, free T4 combined with a clearly elevated TSH leads to great specificity for hypothyroidism. Very few things lead to elevated TSH. So this dog, I think you can safely treat with thyroid medication. Now in our second dog, I'm going to warn you, it gets a little more complicated as life does, um, is a 10-year-old male castrated Doberman pincher. And his problems are the asymmetrical alopecia, cross hyperkeratosis, hyperpigmentation, scales, seborrhea, pyoderma, puritis. These are all things that you might expect to find in a dog with hypothyroidism. But they also have, are caused by other things. Um, the general biochemical results are absolutely normal. And in this case, um, our testing goes on to show us that the um, total T4 is low. The free T4 is low normal, but I'll say, let's, I'll emphasize in the normal range, in the reference range. TSH is normal. And T3 is a uh, slightly low. So, the, so here we have a total T4 that's low. If we, we did our screening test and said T4 is our screening test. Remember, that can only be useful to us if T4 is normal while it's low. Free T4 is low normal, so, but it's actually in the normal reference range. And TSH is not elevated. So the question is, should we treat this dog? And our options I'm going to give you here are A, to do no, these, this animal does not support hypothyroidism. B, I'm not sure, but I would have the dog return for testing in two months to repeat free T4 and TSH. Or C, absolutely yes, the dog's results support hypothyroidism. And let you think about it a little while, but for this recording, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that this is a case where, because of the clinical signs and my suspicion and my initial screening test being low and my knowledge that sometimes TSH is not always elevated, um, while I'm not happy, I don't think a normal free T4 is supportive of it, I think we need to go ahead and retest this animal in a couple of months. Uh, and that's sometimes the case. We sometimes catch an animal fairly early in disease, uh, and we have to follow them. And that's what I would suggest in this case. And what you'd be looking for, I'd focus on, uh, in this case, seeing if free T4 also falls and TSH rises. So let's move to the cat. And this is a 16-year-old domestic long-haired cat that's been losing weight, has unthrifty hair coat, and has a ravenous appetite. The picture is shown on the right. 
In this cat, the physical exam showed it was thin, body condition score 2 out of 9, had an open mouth breathing as shown here, tachycardia at a 4 out of 6 heart, systolic heart murmur, and you can palpate movable masses in the cervical region on either side of the trachea. Relatively small kidneys, that could be an old cat thing, and it had systolic uh, hypertension, so high blood pressure. So hopefully you've got the impression that there are a few things there that would be supportive of the clinical state of hyperthyroidism. And let's look at our testing. We will go right to it. Um, total T4 is, I'll write it out again, is, is high. If you remember Dr. Peterson's little uh, t uh, schema, guess what? We've got our diagnosis. Even though free T4, sometimes, as we showed before, can be normal. This is actually high normal. And we know that TSH in most hyperthyroid cats can be undetectable. And the problem with that is so can it be in euthyroid cats. So I think all things together, um, the cat's presentation, would we treat this cat or not? I would say uh, let you think about it, but for the presentation, for the recording, I'm going to go ahead and tell you I would say yes. I think this, this absolutely supports the uh, cat having hyperthyroidism. You palpated thyroid nodules. T4 is elevated. The clinical signs are pretty classical. So let's take a look at the second cat, which is a 12-year-old male castrated domestic short hair. It's shown weight loss also over the last three months, um, going from 3.5 to 2.9 kilograms. In the history in the last year, it had borderline BUN values and creatinine values and also urine-specific gravity that could show some concentration at 1027. Recently, the cat became polyphagic and polyuric polydipsic, and it has a slightly elevated BUN and slightly elevated creatinine. So moving to thyroid function tests, what do we have here? Total T4 is normal in the, in the reference range. Free T4 in this case is elevated. Hmm. And TSH is undetectable, which is consistent with detectable, which is consistent with hyperthyroidism, but also with some euthyroid animals. So the question is, what would we do here? And as before, we have our options of absolutely uh, no to absolutely yes, and then in the middle, um, we're not sure. But we might have the cat return in a month to repeat total T4, free T4, followed by a T3 suppression test. And I think a lot of this depends on how you present it to the owners. Uh, if we were to treat this animal, we, while indeed we'd be justified in saying that free T4 would, is elevated and TSH is undetectable, the fact is there are spurious a elevations occasionally with free T4, usually not this much. Uh, we're a little bit bothered by the fact that total T4 is not uh, elevated, but we also know that the cat has done the borderline of having some renal disease. So what would what that circumstance would be, total T4 could be normal and the free T4 elevated, and, and that would be what we care to measure um, as the true truth, if you will, physiologically. But I think um, given the cost and the other things going on with the animal, it would be useful to have it come back and to see if these values are any different. Um, I'm highly suspicious this animal is hyperthyroid, but I think in this case I would choose B. And so um, B would be my answer for this, uh, to be on the cautious side and then to do a suppression test and see if there is a lack of suppression um, following giving T3, and that would also support hyperthyroidism. So I hope this has helped you understand um, diagnostic tests. If you take them one step at a time, you can break it down and hopefully keep
Keep it fairly simple, um, but rely on your understanding of the negative feedback and that normal hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. Um, I'd be happy to take questions via email.